Welcome to this program, Church Around the Corner. I am your host, Dr. Kenneth Eta. I'm the pastor of Jubilee Full Gospel Mission in Wana Robbins, Georgia. I would like to invite you to come fellowship with us. We are at 590 Carl Vincent Parkway and Suite 900, again, Wana Robbins, Georgia. We meet every Sunday morning for a dynamic service with the Lord. Our service starts at 1030. I encourage you to come Sunday morning, 1030. Come worship with us at Jubilee Full Gospel Mission. I'd like us to just go in prayers as we examine the Word of God today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for everyone that is opportune to follow this broadcast. I pray that, God, you will speak to us from your word. We pray, take absolute control. Let your word bring freedom. Let your word bring healing. Let your word bring salvation. Let your word bring breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we want to look at the word of God and we want to read from uh, Luke chapter 13. We want to read from verse 10 down to verse 17. Luke chapter 13 from verse 10 down to verse 17. And our topic is seen, summon, and saved. Seen, summon, and saved. Luke chapter 13 verse 10 down to 17. The Bible says, Now when he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to himself and said to her, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to walk. Therefore come and be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or donkey from the store and lead it away to water? So ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, think of it, for eighteen years be loose from the bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Praise God. This is a story of a woman that had an encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ on the Sabbath day. Uh, the Bible takes time to describe the condition of this woman. This is one of the unique places in the Word of God where the Bible actually uh, describes the condition, describes the sickness of an individual. Physically, this woman was in ill health. She was sick. She was not feeling well. There was sickness on her body. And the Bible says she suffered from infirmity. She suffered from the spirit of infirmity. Physically, she had a serious problem. She had this problem that she could not lift up her head. The Bible says she was completely bent and all she could see was the ground. If she is talking with somebody, she could not look at the face of the person. She could not look at the sun in the day. She could not look at the beauty of the stars and the moon in the night. Yeah, she, she was sick. She was sick. She was bent. Her body was wrapped up. The woman was sick physically. Her condition is described as a condition of infirmity, sickness. She was bent. Spiritually, the woman was in trouble. 
Spiritually, she is what we could call a Christian because Jesus said in verse 16 that this woman being the daughter of Abraham, she was a daughter of Abraham, yet she was oppressed by Satan. She was oppressed by the enemy. So spiritually, she was under oppression. She was not possessed, but she was oppressed. You know, the, when Jesus healed her, Jesus didn't exercise demons out of her. Jesus did not cast out demons out of her. Jesus just looked at her and said, woman, thou art loose. So spiritually, she was under oppression. And it was oppression, the Bible says, for 18 years. Not, so not only did she have a physical condition, this woman had a spiritual condition. She, she, she was oppressed by the enemy for a long time. It was not a three days oppression. It was not a three weeks oppression. It was more than a three years oppression. The Bible says she was oppressed for 18 years. Socially, you know, she was an object of disgrace because of her condition. She could not fit in socially. There is no account in the Bible that suggests she was married. Who married a woman that is completely twisted and completely bent? You know, she was void of companion. There is no account that she has kids or children. How can a woman have kids when she cannot look upright? She can't even sit comfortably on the chair. So socially, she had become an object of disgrace in her community. You see, in many communities, kids have a way to, to imitate people like that, you know, they become an object of disgrace, an object of shame. So what we see as far as this woman's condition is concerned is that she had a problem, a physical problem. She had a problem, a spiritual problem. She had a problem, a social problem. Physically sick, spiritually oppressed, and socially she could not fit in into the community. You know, but the good news about the story is that this woman had an encounter with Jesus. And I come to tell you that an encounter with Jesus can turn around your situation. An encounter with Jesus can set you free. I don't know whether physically you are sick and your body is in pain. Again, the good news is that an encounter with Jesus can bring healing on your body. Spiritually, I don't know your spiritual state. Are you okay with God? Is your relationship with God strong? Or are you under attack by the enemy? Is your spiritual life weighing down? Again, the good news remains the same. An encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ can set you free. In fact, the Bible says, He who the Son of God sets free is free indeed. He can set you free spiritually. He can set you free physically. Do you have a social problem? Are you finding it difficult to fit in the community like this woman? Jesus can turn your story around. He can put a testimony in your mouth. So I want us to look at the scripture carefully and lift up some things from this passage. Number one, she kept showing up. This woman kept showing up in Luke chapter 13, verse 10. In verse 10, he says, Now he was teaching in one of the synagogue on Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman. There was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and had bent over and could no way raise herself up. The Bible says Jesus was in the synagogue. He was teaching in the synagogue. And the Bible says there was a woman. There was a woman. There was a woman in the synagogue. And that is why I say she kept showing up. In her condition for 18 years, sick for 18 years, oppressed for 18 years, her back completely bent for 18 years. But this woman was in church. This woman showed up. The Lord was in the synagogue. And the Bible says there was a woman. I challenge you today. How many people show up to church even when they are in problems? How many people refuse to come to church because it's raining? How many people refuse to come to church because they are not feeling well? How many people don't show up because of one situation or the other? Here we see a woman. 
oppressed by the enemy, sick in her body. But the Bible says even in the synagogue she was there. She showed up. I challenge you to show up. Show up in God's house. Show up in the presence of the Lord. It doesn't matter your condition. It doesn't matter your sickness. It doesn't matter the hardship you are going through. You need to show up in God's house. Because when we come in the presence of the Lord, in His presence there is liberty. In His presence there is freedom. The woman kept showing up. You need to show up. Even if it is rain, you need to show up. If there is sun outside, you need to show up in God's house. If it is sunny, you need to show up. If you are making a lot of money in life, you need to show up in the house of God. If you are poor, you need to show up in the house of God. The Bible says when Jesus was in the synagogue, it says there was this woman. This woman was sick. But she was in God's house. This woman was oppressed spiritually, but she was in God's house. This woman could not fit in socially because of her condition, but she was in the house of God. Are you hearing the word of God today? I encourage you to show up to the house of God. In Jubilee Full Gospel Mission, we trust the Lord for His presence and for His power. And every time we come together in fellowship, God's presence is available. I challenge you to show up. Are you looking for a spiritual home? Are you looking for a church family? Show up. Come to God's house. You have no reason. You have no complain in the presence of God, to, to give while you stay away from the presence of God. Look at this woman in her desperate condition, yet she showed up. Look at this woman in her hardship, yet she showed up. And the good news is that when she came, the Lord saw her. The Bible says but when Jesus saw her, as this woman came into the house of God, God saw her. The Lord Jesus Christ saw her. How I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will see you. As you come into God's house, as you come into his presence, he is going to see you just as he saw this woman, just as he saw the children of Israel in their affliction in Egypt. Whatever affliction you are going through, the Lord Jesus Christ is seeing you. We will be right back. Welcome back to this program, Church Around the Corner. This is Dr. Kenneth A. Tan talking on the topic, Seen, Summon, and Save. And we are focused in the book of Luke, chapter 13. We are reading from verse 10 down to 17. There the Bible describes a woman that had an infirmity, a condition. This woman was completely bent. And the Bible says she has been in this condition for 18 years. We are looking at the Word of God and what we see is that this woman had a physical condition. She was sick. She was bent. And she also had a spiritual condition. She was oppressed by the enemy. And she also had 
a social condition. Her physical and spiritual condition led to her social condition. She could not fit in into the community. She could not build friends. She could not build a family. You know, she was in tears by herself. It could result in loneliness when you have such physical condition. And what we discover is that this woman was in the temple. She was in the synagogue as Jesus was teaching. And we challenge you that you need to show up into God's house. It doesn't matter your situation. It doesn't matter your circumstances. It doesn't matter the pain you are going through. Come into God's house. Come into the presence of the Lord. Because in his presence, there is freedom. In his presence, there is deliverance. In his presence, there is breakthrough. And we are looking at the second point. Jesus saw her. When this woman was in the temple, the Bible says, but when Jesus saw her, Jesus saw her, the Lord sees you. The Lord sees the pain. The Lord sees the tears. People might not see it. You might be crying in the night because of your condition and men might not be able to see it. But I come to let you know that Jesus is seeing you. When the children of Israel were crying in affliction, even in the land of Egypt, the Bible says the Lord saw them. The Lord heard their cry. I come to let you know that God sees the tears. He sees the pain. He sees the sickness. He sees the hardship. He sees the difficulty you are passing through. You know, this woman had a deformed physical condition. Men have a way to look at women that are beautiful. But Jesus is looking at everyone. Jesus is looking at all, hoping that all will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. The Bible says Jesus saw her. He saw who she was. Jesus saw who she is. And Jesus saw what will happen to her if she goes away from the, the, the synagogue without a touch from the master, without the saving power of the master. The Lord sees you. Jesus is looking right into your heart. Jesus is looking right into your family, right into your community. And the good news is that when Jesus sees you in, in your affliction, he is willing to help you. He is willing to rescue you. He is willing to bring deliverance. What kind of pain? You need not to run away from God's presence. He sees you. He sees that pain. He is willing to rescue you. Praise the Lord. Point number three, Jesus summoned her. Jesus summoned her. In, in verse 12 of Luke chapter 13, the Bible says, when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him. Jesus called her. Jesus summoned her. Amen. Jesus saw her in her pains and in her affliction, and Jesus summoned her. Jesus called her to himself. Do you know that Jesus is calling you? There is a summon for you. Jesus is calling you to himself. Jesus is calling all those that are burdened and heavy laden unto himself. Jesus is calling you. Yes, you. He's calling you. He's calling you to himself. He's calling you to his saving power. Jesus is saying he stands at the door of your heart and he's knocking. If you will open up, he says he will come in and sup with you. You need not spend life by yourself. You need not shut the door to the master. He is calling you. He is calling you. Jesus has a summon for you. This was this woman in a bad condition, a spirit of infirmity, oppressed by the enemy. She showed up in the synagogue. When she showed up, the Bible says Jesus saw her. And when Jesus saw her, Jesus summoned her. Jesus called her. Jesus is calling you. What problem do you have in this life? Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you as many as we hear God's word and respond to his call. He will in no wise cast them out. And you know, the good news is that when the Lord summons somebody, 
it ends up with an acquitter, an acquitter from every problem in life, an acquitter from sickness, an acquitter from sin, an acquitter from pain. You know, when Jesus summons somebody, that person has all reason to rejoice because freedom is around the corner. If you know the story of blind Bartimaeus, he, he was a man that was born blind and he had a jacket that he used to put on to announce to the community that he's a blind man. Everybody that will see that jacket, they will give way because they will know a blind man is coming. But do you know when Jesus was going through Jericho, the Bible says blind Bartimaeus began to call on the name of Jesus. And the Bible says the people tried to suppress him, but he shouted the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says Jesus stood still and summoned him and called him to himself and called him. He asked him to come. That is the same call that Jesus extended to this woman that had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Come, my daughter, come, my son. That is the same call that Jesus is calling you in your sickness. Jesus is calling you to come unto him. Come and receive freedom. Come and receive healing. That is the same call that Jesus is calling you in your sin. Come and be set free from sin. Come and know the grace of God. Whatever burden you are carrying, Jesus is calling you to come. He's calling you to come. You know, when Baltimaeus heard that Jesus was calling him, the Bible says he took off the coat of blindness and he threw it away as he was going to Jesus. Because Baltimaeus knew that when the master called, there will be freedom. What code of blindness are you carrying? What code of sickness are you carrying? What code of sin are you carrying? As the master calls, there is freedom. There is freedom around the corner. Hear the word of God today. I say Jesus is calling you. He's calling you out of sickness, out of sin, out of the war, out of pain. How I pray that you will respond to the call of God today. How I pray that you will say yes to the master. It doesn't matter how you can walk and how you can get to the master. People come to him in different categories and in different ways. For this woman, she was bent and the woman called him and she was going slowly but surely to the master. There are some people that will go fast because of their ability. There are some people that will go slowly, but the good news is that he has called you. He has called you. It doesn't matter what the community is saying. You can say the master has called me. I have a call over my life. Jesus has called me. That is my story. He called me and he's calling you today. And the third thing we want to see is that Jesus saved her. Jesus saved her. In verse 12 of Luke chapter 13, it says, But when Jesus saw her and called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. In verse 13, it says, And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight immediately she was made straight. Jesus saved her of that condition of infirmity. When Jesus summoned her, Jesus saved her. Jesus saved her. This woman had been in that condition for 18 years. The Bible says she could not lift up herself. She had struggled to lift up herself. Her condition had twisted her, and this woman could only see the ground. She had struggled to lift up herself, but she could not. She had struggled to look at the faces of people when she talks to them, but she could not. She probably had struggled to look up at the sun, but she could not for 18 years. But when Jesus saw her and Jesus summoned her, Jesus saved her. The Bible says Jesus looked at her and said, Woman, thou art loose. And Jesus laid his hands on her. And the woman was instantly, the Bible says immediately, this woman was made straight. Immediately she was made straight. 
her condition disappeared. Her sickness disappeared. Her bent condition was instantly healed with a call and a touch from the master. Just a word from the Lord can set you free. Just a touch from the master can set you free. What sickness, what pain, what trouble are you in? I bring God's word to you that at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every sickness must bow and every disease will give way. I pray for you that God's healing power will come over your body today and bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ. The fourth point that we see, the Bible says, she glorified God in verse 13. It says, when Jesus laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. So she worshipped God. Point number four. She worshipped God. The Bible says when she realized that she was healed, she glorified God. She celebrated God. She began to sing and to dance in glorification to God because God has healed her. This is a woman in a condition for 18 years. No one could help her, but the Lord brought healing. So no one could silence her. She glorified God. She worshipped the Lord. She praise the Lord. As the Lord touch your body today, how I pray that you will worship him. How I pray that you will glorify him. Come join us in Jubilee as we worship the Lord together for what God is doing in your life. Now I want to pray for you. Everyone within the sound of my voice that is sick, I pray for God's healing power over your body now. I command every sickness and every disease to go in Jesus' name, I rebuke every sickness, every back condition, every cancer be healed in Jesus' name. Please come fellowship with us. May the Lord be with you. Amen. Hey, if you're a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you are interested in TV ministry, we want to partner with you through Church Around the Corner. It's a great way to start a TV ministry or see if you're interested. I need you to call me at 478-474-8400 or email me gm at wgnm.com. Together, we can do great things for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I look forward to hearing from you.